I have an interesting story about the this. You mentioned angels and demons, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna address that. Michael Mott in prison, we're on maximum security. He had started delving into some satanic and cult literature. And the beauty about Texas prison, you can get any books through the mail. Books come through the mail, man. They're all about you reading books and leaving them alone. So. <coughs> He's reading all this literature, and he, he kind of descends psychologically into an area. You become Satanist, whatever, man. People just look at it like, oh, whatever, don't care. But one day, we were in the day room downstairs, and football was on the television. And there's four of us sitting at a steel table. And all of a sudden, we hear a fight going on in three row in a cell. And everybody knows what a fight sounds like. It happens all the time. Two guys, are, two guys fighting in a cell. The cells are too small. They're going to touch elbows and knees and, and heads and fists. They're all going to touch architecture, and you're going to hear it. And all the architecture is concrete and steel. There's another, there's, there's, this, this, these aren't hotels. These are prisons. So we're all hearing the bangs. I'm like, well, we can hear where it's coming from. So my, Michael Mott and his celly are having a fight. We hear grunting, hear all kinds of stuff. So it goes on a little too long, though. It goes on a little too long. And there are protocols in prison, man. People fight all the time. It's none of our business. But if a fight goes on too far, okay, well, we're going to look out for Michael Ma. We don't need him killing anybody because we don't need him suffering those consequences. And we don't need him killing his celly because, you know, his celly might have, might have needed his ass beat. I don't know. I don't know what the situation was. He might have woke up and saw his celly had his, his penis. I don't know, man. It's just prison is a very wild environment. But uh, four, of us went up, four of us went up to the three row to go look in his cell. And the very first thing that happened to me was the hairs on my body stood out and I walked right into an aura of absolute cold. I remember stepping back and, and looking at, at Adam Duche and Adam Duche felt the exact same thing. And I remember looking at his face because he was looking at mine. I was terrified. I didn't realize I had a terrified face, but I just walked into a aura of absolute cold and dread in front of Michael Mott's cell. And I had... Uh, I remember we, we, had, we had waved to the tower to tell them to open the door. And, you know, this is maximum security, man. The prison guards, they do pretty much do what you tell them. It's, it's not like minimum and medium security. Uh, maximum security, we just say, hey, we got a problem. So they opened the door, and uh, Michael Mott came running out that cell, hit that rail, almost went all the way off three row, ran to the shower and cowered down. And we looked in that cell, and that cell was freezing cold. And even though the neon light was real bright, over the toilet area, that whole light, that whole cell should have been well lit up. It wasn't. There was a haze in that cell. I could not, I didn't know, I wouldn't go in there. But he had his Dungeons and Dragons books out and stuff. And Michael Mott had lacerations on him. And he, he had bruises on him and his fists were all beat up like he'd been hitting something. And it was so weird. When we finally got the story out of him, he said a demon came out of a book and they fought. And I believe him. And I'm not a Christian. I'm not a criminal, I'm not coming. I believe him because of that cold and that dread I felt and what I saw in that cell and mainly because of the way he looked. That man doesn't have fingernails. Michael Mott did not have fingernails, but he had some vicious scrapes. He was fighting something in that cell and he was the only one in that cell. His celly was working in the kitchen. We didn't know that. We thought his celly was in there. So that's my only story about, about it happened in prison. He quit, he, he became a devout Christian totally started going to the chapel every Sunday, every Wednesday night. He got baptized. He threw away all his, all his satanic literature. and done. So that's my testimony about angels and demons. I have no other testimony, and you'll never hear me say another story about demons, unless something happens in the future. But as far as the past, that's the only story I have.